everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Yeah, and I meant what I said to him, man. You know, that's just how easy it is for, you know, things to get out of hand in the penitentiary, man, for you to, you know, be in a position when you get ready to throw everything away for something so petty because the whole situation started out so petty. But like I say, when you in there, you know, the pettiest things can cost you your life because if you sleep on somebody, then somebody will do something to you. So it, it was crazy, man. It was a crazy situation, man. But that's when God comes in, man, and works his plan because his plan ain't never your plan. You see what I'm saying? And um, I was so glad that the situation ain't turned out the way that it could have turned out. And like I told y'all in the previous story, you know, just the next day, man, mm, the next day I found out, man, that I made parole, man. It was just so crazy because the warden called me over there. And when he called me over there, man, I was like, man, I don't know. And I thought it was something about this situation. Somebody had snitched about this situation and it got back to him and he was more or less going to call me over there and chastise me, man. But when he called me over there and gave me that news, you know, like y'all seen on the previous videos, man, I don't want to keep reiterating it, but it was just such a joyous moment, you know. And I can remember when I got that news, man, it just like, you know, it sunk in my head, but it changed, changed, you know what I'm saying, my whole perspective because it was so surreal that... I was still trying to process it the whole time, the whole time, man. And um, like I say, man, I remember getting back, man, and calling my mom and going through the emotions with her, man, and trying to hold in, you know what I'm saying, my emotions, you know, till I could get somewhere by myself and just sit down and process that information, man. I remember Peanut was the first dude that I told, man. Peanut was the first one I told. I told Peanut before I went to my self account, and I also had called my mom, but uh, it, it was a joyous situation, man. And her and my daughter, man, the way she exploded with joy when she found out that I had made parole, man, it just was uh, surreal. But like I say, you know, you ain't never out of the penitentiary till you out of the penitentiary. Because even getting that information and putting it in perspective, and I was trying to keep it low. I ain't want, really want people to know like that, but then you had... The COs, man, and they was they knew about the situation and they was coming around and like congratulations and woo-woo. So then before you knew it, everybody know. And then it was like usually when you make parole like that, man, they were supposed to get you up off of that compound within 72 hours, man. You're supposed to be gone to the re-entry, you know, packed up, gone to the re-entry and start your whole process of five months re-entry before you, you know, get out of the penitentiary. So I'm waiting and I'm waiting, man, and I'm I'm in this euphoria, man. I'm processing this stuff and I'm waking up. I remember waking up the next day trying to say, you know, you know, how do I move? What do I do? You know what I'm saying? Do I keep my same routine? Do I do the same thing? You know, because now everything different. You know, you got it on paper, but you ain't really got it. So you don't really, you know, and, and I never made parole before, so I ain't even really know how to process it. You know, it still was seeming surreal to me. You know what I'm saying? But you can't let your guards down, man, because now once it starts circulating it, everybody knew I made parole and then everybody else looking at you different. You know what I'm saying? Dudes that might owe you money, they ain't worried no more about trying to pay you because they know you ain't going to do nothing to them. I definitely won't. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I left all them bills and, and stuff to Peanut and Peanut definitely going to want all that money. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, it, they start looking at you different. Then dudes that might not never have liked you, but was always scared to say something to you. Now they might look at you different because they feel like your back is up against the wall. So you still in a gray area, a dangerous area. You know what I'm saying? And um, I was uh, and then they put me in even more of a dangerous position because the three days came and gone and I ain't gone nowhere. I'm still there. You see what I'm saying? Because they had paperwork and all this stuff going on that, you know, mines was taking longer to process or something was going, and I, and that made me nervous. That made me have doubt, like, is this real or, you know what I'm saying, am I really going home or is they playing games or have they changed their mind? Some, You know, all of this stuff goes through your head, you know. Excuse me, I was trying to process all of this. And I'm like, man, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? I, I started getting nervous. You know, I started, you know, 
after about a week, I'm still there after a week. I write a request and I'm asking what's going on, why I ain't you know got moved, ain't nothing going on, they ain't can't pack my stuff. Because if you get transferred the next day, they come pack your stuff the day before you leave it. So, you know, I'm like, man, what, you know, and I was nervous as I don't know what, man. I was nervous, purpose, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. But, you know, like I say, it ended up, man, you know, taking me a couple of weeks, man. So all of that time, I'm still there. And I suppose been gone in three days. And here it is a couple of weeks. I ain't going nowhere. And I'm like, man, something ain't right, man. And then, you know, like I say, you dealing with all the dudes. And it came a payday where, you know what I'm saying, dudes might have just bought a little something for me. And I might have just gave it to them. I won't even really run in the store no more. But, you know, I still had, a, a, you know, a whole, a large amount of food because I kept food. And I, I had to eat. I didn't go to the kitchen. So I still might get some. Somebody, something, but I won't even put in tax on it. I was just giving it to them just to be friendly, just to help somebody out. They ain't had nothing to eat, so they wouldn't have to go to the store box. Dudes that I was cool with or whatnot, but you know, they was like, boom, when the store came, do, do you know, Banky, you want this back? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nah, go ahead, you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't need it, you know what I'm saying? And then after a little time was going by, man, I was like, man, hold on, you know, I don't know what's going on. I might need all of that stuff because you don't know. And like I say, when you never got out, you never got. You know what I'm saying? Them words that, uh, yeah, you made parole, you know, none of that. So I, I do remember going over there a couple of days later, though, and the counselor did officially give me the paperwork that said that I made parole. So I do remember getting that, and I was like, okay, well, this got to be real, man. I was trying to get in touch with my counselor. Why I ain't gone? You know what I'm saying? I eventually did talk to him, and they was telling me, oh, you you going to leave. It's just something that they got going on with the transfers, this, that, and the third. But in actuality, all that was pushing my date back. Yeah, I can actually get out. You know what I'm saying? Because... You got to go to the reentry, then you got to get in the program, but then you got to complete the program, which takes five months. But like I say, if you're supposed to be there within 72 hours, I won't there within 72 hours. So I actually got pushed back a couple of weeks. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, I was just uh, trying to function in on there, man. I had Keith in the cell with me. He all excited. He just as crazy as a, a bed bug, man. He like, oh, man. Man, man, you going home, man. <laughs> Boy, I know it feel good, don't it, Mike? It feel good. It feel good, don't it, Mike? It feel good. He'll ask you the same question over and over again. That's just how he is. It feel good, man. Oh, man, I can't wait, man. I know, boy, I know you feel good. I be like, yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and it did feel good. But like I said, it was more so now getting to be like a nervous feeling because I ain't know what was going to happen. I ain't know how it was going to happen. I knew nothing about the program. This was something that they had just started. I'm like, what do we got to do in there? And they saying you got to definitely pass the program before you can get out. So I'm like, what type of courses do they got? What do I got to take? You know what I'm saying? All of these things was uh, issues in my head, man. And then, you know, you start processing all this information and you start reflecting. And I start looking back over my journey, man. All the things I went through, all the things I overcame, man. All the dangerous situations that I was in. All the dangerous situations that I put myself in. You know, and I was like, man, this, you know, this this is uh, amazing, man, that if I can actually get out the door. So then you start thinking about things that you'll do when you get out here, what it's going to be like when you first walk out. You know, all of these things going through your head, man, it's hard to sleep. It was hard to sleep for me. You know, I couldn't even really, you know, sleep or lay down and, 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 and get some good rest because I had so many emotions going on, so many things that was going through my head, man. And um, I can just remember that, man. The food, <laughs> the food ain't taste the same no more. You know, I was, uh, I ain't want to cut hair no more. I ain't want to cut nobody hair, man. You know, I just wanted to, to you know, process all this information, man, and, and, and think about the possibilities of what I could do, what I will do, you know, what the future look like, man, what it's going to look like when I first walk out that gate. And, man, it, it, it was just an um, amazing time for me, man. It was really an amazing time for me, man. But like I say, the danger was still in there, man. Dudes still running their mouth. You know, fights still breaking out in the pod. Dudes still arguing and beefing over petty stuff. And you trying to stay out of the situation. But like I say, you always locked in the penitentiary if you locked in behind them walls, behind them uh, bars, behind them doors. So... Like I say, anything could have popped off at any time. I don't remember really having any real issues, 
during that time right there, I did want to get on the phone a lot more often, man. So I was getting in the line on the phone. I was most definitely double clicking because I was calling people, you know what I'm saying, talking to them or whatnot. And for the most part, ain't nobody say nothing to me. I knew for real if something would have really ever jumped off or popped off or I would have had any type of conversation during that time after I had already received that information. Dudes like Peanut and other dudes in there that really rock with me, man, you know, they would have, you know, addressed this situation just to make sure that I didn't, you know, mess that up with what I had going on, that, you know, the possibility of going home. Plus, like I can say you still... You know, you had them young dudes in there that I had recently had a beef with. And in their eyes, you know, they could get ideas in their head then. Like, oh, yeah, well, he get ready to go home. He ain't trying to do nothing. Or, you know, and then you get dudes and be jealous because you're going home. And I ain't never been that type of dude. I ain't never been the type of dude that I'm, you know, worrying about what another dude doing. It's been a lot of dudes that made parole before me. It's been a lot of dudes that went home before me. It's been a lot of dudes that I felt like in my mind, like, man, how he go and I ain't go. But at the same time, I never had that type of hate in my heart. I want to see everybody get up out of there. Everybody. I don't care who it is because I understand what prison is. I understand what it do to you. I understand what it do to your mental. I understand what it do to your physical. I understand what it do to your whole mentality. So I don't want to see anybody, you know, living like that, you know, on a daily, daily basis. I don't want to see the people family going through what they going through, worried about them in there, having to travel all the way up there, having to come see them, having to only be able to talk to them on the phone, the dudes that got to deal with the fact that, you know, they can't see their kids, they can't grow up, you know what I'm saying, you know, a, a, a child needs to father, you know what I'm saying, especially in this day and age, you can see that now, so I, I ain't want to see nobody go through that, and I wanted, you know, everybody to get out, I still want everybody to get out, I talk to dudes every day, on the phone, dudes call me, all these dudes call me, Peanut call me all the time, you know, Lance, you know, uh, call me all the time, that's Wale, you know what I'm saying, Wale, you know, Jerry call me, Keith call me, you know what I'm saying, I keep in touch with all them dudes, I keep a, you know what I'm saying, to let them know that it's possible, you know what I'm saying, you can get out here and you ain't got to listen to what everybody say, oh, it's going to be hard out here, it's going to be this, it's going to be that, yeah, it's, it, you know, ain't nothing easy out here, you know, I'm out here now, and it ain't nothing easy. I, you know, it's a new life out here. You know, you got more responsibilities out here. You got bills to pay. You got things to do. You got responsibility. In there, your responsibility is to stay alive. You see what I'm saying? But you ain't got to worry about uh, paying the light bill, paying the rent. You ain't got to worry about doing all those, th all, those, all those things when you in there. So you do get in some type of uh, relaxed state in there to the point where as to certain things you ain't got to worry about, but the things that you do have to worry about while you in there are greater than the things that you have to worry about when you out here. You see what I'm saying? So it's a different philosophy, but when them dudes call me, I'm able to relay that message to them. I'm able to give them confidence. I'm able to let them know that, brother, you're going to be way better out here than you are in there. Much, much better, no matter what the circumstances is going on out here, you're going to be in a way better position, man, to uh, live your life and try to prosper every day. Because every day you wake up out here, you got a chance and you got an opportunity, man, to try to make something happen. And if you got to work all day, if you got to struggle, if you got to make ends meet, then that's what it is. But you just don't put yourself in a position where you'll be back in there. You know, people always say... When you go through something real bad, man, they say just put it behind you, forget about it, you know, and just like I was doing on the No Jumper interview when they was saying, you know, Adam asked me, he was like, you know, you know, you've been locked up so long, don't you feel the need that you just want to say, you know, just forget about this, just talking about prison stuff and, and, and all of that and just go live your life because you missed out on so much stuff. And, and I feel like, you know, the answer I gave him, like, nah, because I feel like this is living my life because it's helping somebody, it's letting somebody know you know, what's going on in prison, what, what the uh, pitfalls is, you know, if you mess around out here and take some chances that may put you, you know, behind them bars, I want people to know that because I don't want to see nobody else go through what I went through because I ain't had to go through what I went through. If I would have used my common sense, if I would have been an independent thinker, if I would have been able to think for myself, if I would have been able to understand the consequences of my actions, you know, and that's just misinformation. You know, that's misinformation when you don't listen to the people that love you. You don't listen to the people that's in your household, the people that got your best interests at heart. And you go out here in these streets and you listen to these people who don't care nothing about you. They only care about what you can produce for them, what you can do for them, what you can, you know, enhance in their world and not your own. Because when you take that fall, then you're going to be by yourself. All of those people are going to be gone to the wayside. You know what I'm saying? So... 
these are things that I be trying to, you know, put in these young dudes' heads out here now that's in that position where they're young. They don't really understand the ramifications of what they're doing. They don't understand that once you get behind that wall, man, there ain't going to be nobody to help you. Ain't going to be the support that you think you're going to get. It ain't going to be none of that. You see what I'm saying? So you don't make these decisions based upon dudes that don't care nothing about you or dudes that's telling you to do something that you're actually not seeing them do theirself. You know what I'm saying? So... I, I, that's why I do the YouTube. That's why I put this message out there, man. Positive energy, man. Feed the positive, stop the negative, man. Because that was a long road for me and it won't even over. I still had five more months to do and I didn't know what was going to come with that. I didn't know how that was going to be. Because like I said, prior to that, everybody got out, man. They made parole before they came up with this re-entry stuff. You made parole. You was gone on the street within three weeks, you know. But dudes was going out there messing that up. Dudes was going out there... Uh, ill-equipped to handle what, what was society had to offer. They couldn't fill out applications. They didn't know how to apply for a job. They didn't uh, know how to go try to get their driver's license. You had dudes that been locked up so long and so young, they never even had a driver's license. They never had to pay a bill. They never had to um, live by themselves and none of that. So everything that they knew and everything they learned was in the penitentiary. And those uh, tools and those uh, 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 things that you learn in the penitentiary don't necessarily translate to out here in the real world. But these were things that was necessary, man. And I think for those things, when I finally did get into reentry, I found out that those things was they was monumental in, in, in you know my transition. Yeah, I think most people, man, that it was locked up as long as I have, man, they need you know what I'm saying all of that structure, man, before they actually walk back out into the real world, man. But yeah, I can remember when they day they came and, and they did come to pack me up, man. And I can remember packing up all my stuff and um, just, you know, thinking in my mind, man, that this, you know, this real, you know what I'm saying? You can really move on to the next stage before you actually go back out into society, man, after 33 years. So it was, uh, it, it was, it was mind boggling, man, you know, packing up all my stuff, you know, and then that night, you know, uh, hollering at everybody before the last lockdown, man, talking to people, you know, dapping them up, you know, exchanging information, man, you know, telling dudes, you know, like peanut them, man, I'm going to stay in contact with you, this, that, and the third, because that's one thing I ain't never want to do, man. I never wanted to be one of them dudes that got out and told dudes I was going to holler at them or keep in touch with them and didn't do it because I had went through that so much, you know what I'm saying, over the years, over the decades, you know, dudes saying, man, I'm going to holler at you. Dudes that you was cool with, dudes that you walked with, kicked the wood, you know, might have went to war with or whatever. And they say, man, when I get out, man, I'm going to holler at you. I'm going to stay in touch. I'm gonna... But they get out here and they let the world overwhelm them, man. And then they just forget about all the things that they went through in there, all the things they went through in there with the people they went through it with. You know what I'm saying? And all the, the battles, the ups, the downs, you know, the losses, because you be in there with people and people, you know, lose family members on the street and you know you in this hate factory and you ain't really got nobody around you that will console you or that you can talk to or that you can confide in so you have all that hate and all that hurt built up inside you man and that that's that stuff right there can be real dangerous because somebody could end up being the blunt of that because you're going through so much internally that you can't let it out because you have no outlet you have no no ears to listen you have no uh sympathy no empathy nobody to understand so it you know when you go through all those type of things with people man in that you know in that uh environment man and then when you get out i don't see how some people just can forget that you know i've been around dudes in there doing my bit man who lost their mother you know, dudes who lost their father, dudes who've lost their kids, and man, it's a uh, it's a horrible, horrible situation, man. And um, the pain, man, is almost unbearable. You know, when you take that and put it on top of your condition, put it on top of you know all the other things that you got to process in a day, and you got people who are, are you know are unaware, they don't even know what you're going through, and then they just moving around and moving around you and acting like. Everything is all right. They living in their own world while you dealing with all these things you dealing with. But you have to interact with all these people every day. And they're not having any type of empathy or sympathy about what you're going through because they can care less because they're going through things themselves. So that's a dangerous situation, man. And that's some that's some real uh, um, takes real mental uh, toughness, man. 
and, and to get through some of those situations that do have to go through while they're incarcerated, man. I mean, even the outside world um, plays in a, uh, plays a major part in, you know, how you do that time. Because I know for me, when things weren't going right at home or I had some issues at home or somebody in my family was going through something, it affected my emotions, it affected my personality, it affected my attitude, you know, and usually people end up getting the blunder that they probably didn't deserve it. Or people who did deserve it probably end up getting more than what they did deserve because it's just an emotional, you know, highs and lows when you're up inside there, man. So I was just reflecting on all of that stuff throughout the night that I was packing up, man. And I slept that night, man, and I thought I was going to be able to sleep that good, which I really didn't. I think I probably got like two, two, two and a half hours of sleep, you know, stayed up all night talking to Keith. You know, listening to his foolishness, drinking coffee, Mr. Coffee. That's what I should have called him, Mr. Coffee. And, um, yeah, man, and they come pack you up, man, like 5 in the morning, 4 in the morning, or they'll come wake you up about 4 in the morning, 3 in the morning, about 3 in the morning, and tell you to be ready by, like, 4.30. So, you know what I'm saying? I ain't get that much sleep. I probably went to sleep maybe by lay down, probably, like, 12, you know what I'm saying, or something like that, and before I know it, they was, you know, knocking on the door, telling me, get up to be ready, you know, and, um, yeah, man, it was just a real, real, some real moment, man, walking out, out of that penitentiary in the dark, you know, uh, going over there to get processed, man, you got to go through all of that stuff, too, to get shook down, and, you know, strip search, all of this, to, just to go out of the penitentiary when you ain't got nothing, and I don't know what they think you might be taking, with you or trying to smuggle out the penitentiary with you when you going to a place that's getting ready to release you, what type of contraband they think you're going to take with you, but they still go through all of that. So all of that stuff, you know, starts to resonate with you too because you're saying to yourself, man, you know what I'm saying, I ain't going to have to go through this too many more times. Or you're saying, I was saying to myself, this is the last time that I actually, you know, get on a, a, a prison bus, you know, because this, from here, I was going to re-enter, and from re-enter, you're supposed to go straight home. So I was saying to myself, man, this is the last time that I get on the prison bus. This is the last time that I put on the shackles, the waistband, you know what I'm saying, the, 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 the uh, black box, you know. And I was reflecting all of that, man, while we was driving, just looking out of the window and watching all the stuff go by. And then I'm seeing the cars and the stores and the people, you know what I'm saying, man, I, I'll be out here in a minute with these people, man. And it was just... Man, it was it was it was mind boggling, man. Because like I say, when you've been in that pit for so long as I was, it's just mind boggling and it's hard to process. And like I say, to me, I still ain't believe it fully. You know, I knew what, the, but I still knew by my experience that you still got five months to go. Anything can happen, and I didn't know what I was going to. I didn't know what I was entering into. I didn't know how that was going to be. All I knew that it was on Greensville. I had been to Greensville a couple of times. So how was they going to separate the compound from where I was? Because you still got dudes on there that's not going home. You still got dudes that's not part of the re-entry. Am I going to be interacting with them? Are we going to be, you know, I didn't know none of this. So all of this stuff was a mystery to me, man, but it, all of it was... Still, it, it, it was um, it was amazing because it was the feelings and the emotions and the excitement of what was to come and also the unknown. So, man, it was a process, man. But that was a uh, that was not a way, man. That was that was where I made parole at, man. That was where I wrapped up, um, you know, this a uh, 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 long journey that I've been on, man. Where it was the beginning of the end of it. You know what I'm saying? Still had to go through the re-entry, but that was the beginning of the end of it, man. And it's a lot of stuff that I left out of the night away. But like I said, once I get through these uh, uh, prison transfers and stuff and end up where I got to the re-entry and, and actually got out, then I'm going to go back and revisit some of these places and revisit some of these stories because, like I say, on every prison alone, man, it's... <laughs> It's probably hundreds of stories alone on each prison that I've been on. So, like I said, it's 33 years of prison stories, man. And something happens every day in prison that um, people need to know about. Something happened every day in prison that you may not never see out here in the real world, you know, because it's it's just that crazy. So we're going to continue on these travels, man. We're going to continue on this road with these 33 years of prison stories, man. I appreciate y'all having patience with me. I knew this was a long video because at the same time, this was... the uh, the longest place I had been on stationary at one time. I think I was on here for like six years. So it's a lot more that's 
happened on this institution. There's a lot more characters that I probably want to tell y'all about, but I just wanted to wrap it up. I wanted to put in it what was on my mind. Like I told y'all, I only talk about what comes to my mind at the time that I'm reflecting. But as I go through that, other stuff pop up in my mind. So we will be back on that right away, man. And I will tell y'all some uh, crazy stories that happen on there because definitely some crazy stuff happened on there. But I appreciate y'all, man, for rocking with me, man. I appreciate y'all for all the support. Y'all tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell somebody about this movement, man. This positive energy over here. Feed the positive, stop the negative, man. We trying to change some lives out here, man. We try to keep these young men and women out of prison, man. And um, that's our goal. And we're going to keep on pushing. Salute to TBP. Salute to all my mods, all my uh, members. Man, big love. 2022, we on them. We ain't playing with them, man. Y'all be safe out there. Be smart. Make good decisions. And you know it's coming. Boom! Duck that hook, baby. Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.